Hi, this is Jerry Linton from Original Art Photography. In this video tutorial, we're going to look at how to create a sort of magic eye effect, a little bit like you see uh, in this image here. So we've got someone dressed as a wizard looking into a uh, crystal ball, glass ball, and uh, created something that looks a bit like a sort of fiery eye in there. And I'm going to take you through the various steps involved in doing that. I'm going to jump into photo, jump into Photoshop, and in here we can um, see we're in very, very close with the final sort of image. Uh, it's very gritty, lots of uh, uh, contrast and so on added in there. I'm just going to get rid of a lot of that because that can be a bit sort of distracting, especially at that kind of magnification. And uh, now you can see a little bit more clearly what's being done uh, within that glass ball. If I just switch just that off. This is what we originally had, so obviously with the reflections in there that we would expect. And if I pop that back on, you can see that's what I added in terms of like a sort of flaming eye kind of effect. So we're going to do something very similar to that, so you can see the techniques involved uh, in, in doing so. So I'll just switch that one off, and we'll start with a new blank layer. Now what we want here um, is to do a glow effect and this is similar to what I've shown in another tutorial around a ring and around a the top of the staff uh, you just need a very very small brush and we're going to on a blank layer pop one dab of that brush on there so we're just going to choose first of all our sort of color that we think we might want to work with we want something sort of yellowy orangey quite vibrant saturated color let's go with something like that so let's look for the middle of this, because the glow is going to emanate outwards from uh, wherever you put your dot in. So we want to get it pretty near the middle. So we'll put a dot in there. And um, I'm just going to undo that, because I'm not sure whether I did one or two on that. Let's just pop a new layer back in there. And with our brush, we'll come back in, because I only want one dot on it. Right, there we go. Now you can double-click on your layer next to it like that. And this brings up the layer effects uh, menu. Scroll down to where it says outer glow, tick the box and click in here. Uh, that gives you all your outer glow options. At the moment that's set for a red color. Uh, we don't want the red for this one. What we want is that same sort of orange as we had before. So if we tick on, uh, click on the little uh, color box there, we've now got our dropper available and we can select that same yellow from over here that we used initially, and we click OK. Now we've got various sliders that enable us to change our options. We can also change the, the blend mode and so on. Um, there's the opacity uh, slider, but like you have on any sort of layer, normally you can adjust how see-through you want it to be. Um, you've got this one, which is a noise slider, which is a bit different, and that sort of breaks everything up or allows it to stay quite smooth. Now I want it to be breaking up just a touch, so I'm going to keep that low. The spread, I don't want it to be um, too far out. Um, I, you don't want the glow to be sort of solid all the way to the edges. You want it to sort of fade a little bit. So we want to keep a, a strong center, but leaves it, leave it a bit weak around the edges. The size, we can bring that down so that it's not quite escaping from the, the ball. So if I just go for about there because <clears throat> we're going to put another layer in with some red and that's going to go uh, nearer the edges than this particular one so we'll go OK with that now we want a new layer because um, we can't do this um, on the same layer we're just going to switch to our background colour which at the moment here is, is white and then we're going to find ourselves a red so let's have a look that's looking a bit too pinkish for me really uh, something a bit more sort of like let's try back there that'll do for now so again we're looking for the the, the middle of the ball as much as we can anyway pop a dot in there and then double click bring up the layer effects scroll down how to glow and then click for the options we've got yellow as our color if we just click on that yellow Again, we can use the dropper on the red to bring that red up around the outside and click OK. You can see at the moment the settings being the same, just everything is then overlapping. So what we need to do is make this one a little bit bigger. So we can pull that slider over. So it's just starting to come outside of the, um, 
the glass ball there. Uh, that gives us a little bit more of a kind of flame effect by doing that. And again, of course, you can change the other settings if you want to, the, the, the noise and so on that's being used there. But I think we're going to leave that as it is for the moment. So those two layers together, we get our sort of yellowy, orangey glow and our red glow which already is starting to give uh, a much more interesting effect than just having his reflection in there on its own. Right, next, another new layer. And in this one, we're going to put the uh, the pupil. OK, so to do that, we just use the um, circular or elliptical marquee tool. Click and drag down. Now, let's see, we don't want it too thick. Now, I, have, I know that's a bit off-center now, and if you like me, you've got it not quite, you, quite where you want it. Keep your keep held held down, and then hold space bar, and then you can move it to where you actually would want it to be. So I don't want it too thick. I want it to be reasonably sort of centered like that. Okay. We're going to fill that with black. So D for default. Click in there and fill that up with black. And that's going to give us a pure black um, uh, iris uh, pupil for our eye. Control or Command D to get rid of the uh, the selection around the outside of it. And then just to uh, blend it in a little bit better so the edges aren't too sharp, just add a tiny little bit of blur to it. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just about a pixel is, is plenty. Click OK. So let's just name that layer just so that we know what that one is. So that's our pupil. We'll go for one more layer. And in this layer here, I'm going to add some, some lines that kind of make it look a little bit more like an iris, so it's got a bit more sort of kind of texture to it, I suppose. And for that, I'm going to use the brush, and I'm going to choose a, a different brush to sort of what I might normally use. Uh, I'm going to use, let me just make it nice and big so you can see it, this brush here, which, um, let me just put a mark down with it so you can see it. There you go. Slightly unusual one. I can't remember where I got it, whether it came with Photoshop or from somewhere else. I'm really not sure. But I just wanted to have something which wasn't um, you know, uh, exactly an ellipse like this, but just an, uh, an interesting kind of slightly raggedy line to put in there, which I can add a little bit of blur to afterwards to give us uh, that sort of sense of texture. Now, to get the lines of going running all the way around, we're going to use this um, angle um, tool here within our brush to change things about a bit. So let's just start out by popping one down at about the three o'clock position. And then what we want to do is change the angle in here to 45. Um, so that's going to be the one for over here, really, isn't it, that one? Uh, And we can go for 90. Pop that in there. Change our other one there, 180. So, 270. Oh, yeah, we've got to do it as a minus. Sorry, forgot about that. Minus 45 on there. That gives us that one. Minus 90 on there. That will give us that one. Okay, okay so we just need to get these two up here, which are going to be, to work that out, one hundred and thirty-five. that one in there, and then stick them on this in front of that, and we've got one going the other way. Okay, so we've now got kind of like a clock face worth of um, those marks going around that. And what we're then just going to do is give that a little bit of a blur. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur, just to soften them up a bit. 
doesn't. There we go, that's better. Okay. We don't want it to look too sharp. And then again, we can just drop the opacity uh, down on here as well, so it's not uh, too strong. We don't want to draw attention to it, we just want it to look from a distance as though there's a kind of a suggestion of texture. So if I just pull out a bit, um, let you have a look from further away. That's probably actually still a little bit strong, that. Let's pull it in a bit. If I just turn that off and turn that on, that just gives a little bit of a sense of structure to it. You could put more in, you could put extra ones in between there to give it a little bit more um, and blur them a little bit more outwards using a kind of a zoom blur or something like that. But for the moment, we'll, we'll just stick with that. That gives us enough of a, an idea uh, of what we're up to here. Um, then the next thing that I want to do is add a few little dabs around the edge um, here to make it look like sort of dancing flames. And that we're going to do on another layer. So create a new layer after that. And we need a different brush for this. So we'll go to our brush settings. Let's just zero that out. Uh, we need to find a different brush to use for that. Uh, something which is a bit more just sort of blobby. So just have a little look and see what that looks like. Um, maybe something. Let's try that one. What does that look like? Uh, oh, that'll do for now. That'll be that will be fine. Okay. So again, we can uh, play around with the angle on that if if we want to. Um, what we're going to do as well, of course, is change the colour. So we're going to have to pick uh, a colour from within here. So sample that. And we don't want our opacity um, level too high. I mean, we can always turn it down with the layer selector anyway. But um, let's just uh, pop back to our brush settings here. Uh, we can do them one at a time and change this around if we want to. Or we can use uh, shape dynamics. So we can use what's known as the angle jitter uh, to make it change angles as we're as we're going along, and size jitter uh, makes it change its size a little bit, so it's not a completely uniform thing that we're having every single time that we do it. So let's just go, yeah, brush tip shape back there. Let's just pull that spacing over so you can see it. So you can see now instead of them all being the same, there's a little bit of a, a difference between them, so that when I pop them in here, we're not you can see the brush shape and size changing. Let's just put the our opacity up a bit higher actually with that. Um, there we go. So we can put a few of these dabs around and they're not all going to look exactly the same. Uh, we can then change our colour and go for something a bit of a more of a deeper reddish colour and similarly um, dab it around with our brush changing shape a bit like that and we can go for uh, we have this time so more of the that orangey one slightly different no, that's the same as the, the other one there let's take that maybe a bit brighter not too green that was a little bit on the green side let's pull that down okay let's try that Okay, yep, that's fine. Add a little bit of that in there, like that. And then a little bit more on a darker red, perhaps. It's probably a bit too strong there. Let's take that back a little bit. There we go. So we're getting a, a mixture of dabs of, of colour come in here like that. Okay, at the moment that might look just a bit messy. Um, bear in mind we're working very, very close and it's not going to be viewed like that. It's going to be viewed from further away. Uh, one thing that we can do is just give it a bit of a blur. So we can pull that blur up a little. Let things start to mix into one another a bit more. So, for example, something like that. And now when we zoom out from it, it looks a little bit more flame-like on the edges there. We might still want it to bleed in, them to bleed into each other a little bit more than that. 
we can of course change the opacity down it doesn't have to be at the uh, full sort of opacity level at all you can just dial in as much or as little of it as, as we want so to give it more of a sense of tongues of flame around the edges we'll take the opacity down so you've got little little flecks just spilling out like that so let's just pull out a bit further uh, and we can have a look at what we've done so far let's just put up all those layers into a group and turn the group off and then turn the group on again and you can see the difference uh, what we've created with those few layers um, just to um, draw to a close what we do need to do here is look out for bits where it's overlapping in uh, ways that don't look real don't make sense uh, like over the top of the finger here so we can just add a layer mask to that layer there um, go for a more of a a normal kind of a brush and uh, let's do that over here a bit easier let's go for an all sort of soft round brush and with this we're then going to be painting black onto the layer mask to hide it from the finger like that so we don't mind it glowing a bit around the edges of the finger that's absolutely fine anywhere where it would be facing towards the um, the the glass ball all makes all makes sense but just having it over the front of that finger there really didn't make any sense at all so we needed to just hide that from there a bit more uh, you can tidy that mask up a little bit more um, as well of course to get it exactly how you want it to be but um, there we go there's a quick uh, idea of how you can create some kind of like a magic eye sort of effect um, within that crystal ball there uh, gives you a little bit more interest in it and of course each layer you can play around with the opacity you can take the final thing and just have a slightly more of a hint of it in there if you don't want it to be quite so sort of bold and and, and strong as the one that we've finished there like that so that's another way that you can use this uh, outer glow layer effect um, to create something interesting within your images uh, to just add something in an area of the image uh, which gives you a, a little bit more of a focal point as it does here um, just makes it that little bit more interesting than just being a basic um, glass ball so remember it's just layer effects which you can access by double clicking uh, to the right of the layer there or you can use the FX uh, drop down menu there to choose that uh, and just make sure that you put a little dot of color on that you can then add the glow to and do that on a separate layer each time. Play around with a bit of blur when adding your extra uh, bits of texture into the eye so that it doesn't look too sharp uh, and see what you can come up with. You may even find a texture layer works in there quite nicely. So there you go. That's how I created a sort of magic eye effect in this wizard uh, image. I'm just going to switch the, the final one on there. Uh, so that was my original ones you can see it's a little different and it's also changed a bit because we've uh, whacked a load of contrast and other things onto here to make it look kind of cartoony or paint it painterly really i suppose so this sort of effect that i was going for so there you go uh give it a go um you just need to get your, get yourself a glass ball to photograph to do that with and uh you can easily then create your own kind of magic glowing eye within it thank you very much for watching